Okay, so I'm going to get ready for a jack session this afternoon and tomorrow morning. So I'm going to run you through some of the gear that I'm prepping to take out with, to hopefully go out and catch one. So I'm going to start with, I'll take a few setups out, but this is my new setup and from last week's session, I'd say this probably be my favourite. So this is the new Komodo bait cast rod from Akuma. Uh, this one's rated 8 to 15 kilo and I've also matched that with a Komodo bait cast reel, which is the largest one. So this has a ton of drag and it's stainless steel gearing, so you'll you'll pretty much pull the plug out with this. So what I potentially may run on this um, lure-wise would either be a hard body, um, something similar to this one here. This is a Bagley Rumble B11, um, a favourite lure of mine, which I've caught plenty of jacks on and also uh, barra for when they're in season. So this first larger setup, I have two large bait cast setups. I either run the, a larger plastic or a hard body there. So uh, line wise braid, I'm using 30, 30 pound bionic or platypus and leader, depending on where you want to fish, generally I'll match a 30 pound up to that or maybe up to 40. So yeah, it really comes down to where you're fishing. But um, with this, you've got pulling power. You, you know, you get a, a smaller bait casters, which I had used in the past, where I've had to really thumb down on the spool to, to get the larger jack out. This one, you kind of still do that, but you've just got that more power. You've got the more cranking power to get them out of the snags. And I've, I've had better luck extracting them from kind of tricky areas with a, a setup like this. So that's the first setup, that's Komodo baitcast reel, the larger one, and the Komodo um, baitcast rod. So that's 8 to 15 kilo, 30 pound bionic braid, and a 30 pound leader. Okay, so I'll just put this one aside. Following that one up is a very similar setup. So, <clears throat> excuse me, like I was saying, I run two set setups pretty much very similar. So this is my older one and this is a Citrix from Akuma as well. It's a large reel, baitcast reel, very similar to the Komodo. Strong as hell and like I said before, it can really pull these fish out of tricky areas whereas a, maybe a smaller baitcast reel you might have a little bit of trouble. So you can pretty much lock these right up. I'm running this one on the Akuma Seros and it is a 5 to 12 kilo, 6 foot 6 rod. Uh, the Komodo is also six foot six, so another strong setup. And like I mentioned previously, I'll either run my hard bodies, or lately I've been running one of these Zedman diesel minnows in the five inch. So your four inch are very popular. So I've stepped that up to the five inch, which has more press and has a really nice roll. And when you see them in the water, you'll know why, because they just swim awesome. So the only colour I've actually run in these so far has been the Bad Shad, and I've been catching plenty of cod with them. If you read my last article up on the Tackle Tactics website, these have been slaying the cod. So if that's something you may be interested in, um, jump on and have a read on how I, how I target jacks that turn into cod. So yeah, back to the gear. That's my second large bait cast rod uh, setup. So that's the Akuma Citrix and the Seros uh, bait cast rod. And I've been running this Citrix for, oh, coming on to a year and a half, two years now. Um, it's been brilliant. It's caught a 120 barrel for myself and a handful of jacks where I've just, and it's, it's kind of handled it really, really well. So that one's standing up to the test of the time for two jack seasons. Okay, so now when I'm getting into spin and my slightly heavier spin setup is the Helios, Akuma Helios spinning reel. That's matched with 20 pound bionic braid. Um, sorry, that previous bait cast reel, the Citrix Air has got 30 pounds. So both my bait cast combos run the 30 pound. So when I step down to spin, this is, is a funny one. I, might, I, I tend to use smaller plastics, say a four inch uh, diesel minnows, again, or your three inch minnows. And for me, I just find it easier to cast and I get a real good feel on the end of the rod. 
um, with what's happening down where I cast them, cast them. So that's a four inch diesel minnow that I'll run that on a snake locks. So that's a weedless setup. You can get that nice and tied up into the structure and fish in close. And that matches up really nice, it looks natural. But coming back to the combo, I'll run this one on a Seros, a Kuma Seros, and that one is a five to 12 kilo spinning rod, seven foot. 4,000 size Helios, and yeah, that Akuma Seros. So that's a really good rod. You can get good distance in your cast if you'd like to. And yeah, it just seems to really um, step up and, and yeah, it, it's just a great feeling combo and very affordable as well. So it's nice and light. Uh, you don't have to go the 4,000 size reel, but I tend to put them on there. They're light reels, you can cast them all day. So, and you know, and they got the stopping power. And not only for jacks, you can step up and catch a barrow with it as well. So that's my second combo. Sometimes I take two of these out. So I'll run a, light, a lighter plastic on them and also uh, top water as well. Also run the top water on, on the heavier bait casters. It just really comes down to, they've got a lot of pulling power. So making sure your trebles are up to what your breaking strains are with your, your line and that because you can bend hooks and you can pull hooks as well. Okay, so there's my third combo that I'm taking out. And the fourth combo is something light. So if you, you know, some of the times you get out and you have them sessions where, oh, I'm not getting a bite. And then you're like, well, I'm just going to drop the line class, fish something light. Sometimes it works out for you, sometimes you lose the fish. But um, a favourite rod of mine for a long time and I've had this one for quite a few years now, it is the Akuma LRF. So this one is uh, seven foot. And yeah, it's just a brilliant rod. It's, um, it can throw light lures. And I've only recently just put this little reel on. Usually I have it on my son's rod, but it's a two and a half thousand Avenger from Akuma. So it's not an expensive reel. I run light line on this. I think I've got 12 pound Bionic, uh, 10 or 12 pound on that as well. And it, it's just when you want to, you know, fish maybe lighter lure as well, really, really small um, hard bodies or really small poppers where you kind of want to finesse things a bit. So in the past, a setup like this, I've run over shallow rock bars uh, with them sorts of lures. And yeah, it's, it's more of the finesse type of way to um, approach fishing for mangrove jack. So there you go, that's an LRF with a little Avenger. So haven't put that one to the test yet. I'm keen to get out there this afternoon and, and give it a run. So all my ro uh, reels, I run Bionic, like mentioned, and they range anywhere from your lighter setup, which is your 10 to 12 pound braid, and then you step up to your 20 for your kind of middle setup, and then 30. I don't tend to run any heavier than 30 because it actually breaks a, um, a little bit heavier than that. So there's my four combos. We'll get a closer look up on them. And let's have a look at a few lures. I've mentioned this one, that's a Bagley Rumble B. I run them on bait casters. This one floats. So also if you read that article, you can really search for ground. If you haven't got a sounder or anything like that, like my newest boat at the moment, um, I haven't put a sounder on there yet, but you can search a lot of ground with a floating hard body so you can Cast them out nice and tight to structure. They come down nice and quick and you'll feel the bottom out on certain areas you want to fish. So they're good for prospecting and I know they catch fish. It's always on one of my um, jack rods when I go out. Um, a new lure recently, because uh, I haven't really fished top water for jacks for a long time. I had a session last weekend and we lost some cracking jack on surface and we were using uh, walk the dog sur type surface lures and also uh, this one here which was calling the fish up. This, it's got more presence in the water. This is a fish ink fly half popper but it can also walk the dog so if you're throwing in nice and tight to a big broken uh, log into the water or something like that, like that you can put in a nice tight bloop. Um, it'll push a lot of water out the front with the cupped edge and then you can let it sit, pause, in case that jack's sitting under there and it's not quite tempted out yet. And then you can give it a bit of more of a subtle look and a subtle walk. And that's also got a bit of a rattle to it. So that's a great lure. Uh, like mentioned previously, on my larger bait cast, 
And how I rig uh, some of the plastics I use on that, I don't use a snake lock sometimes. So with this one, I'll use a, um, a headlocks jig head and generally half an ounce. So this is something that gets down quick when I'm fishing deeper water. And I, I tend to run either the four inch diesel minnows or the larger uh, new five inch diesel minnows. Um, and you can just slow roll them as well on broken trees, you know, rock bars. If you've got a sounder, decent sounder, you find some sort of merged timber, cast upstream and just, just roll it down nice and slow. Okay, I think that's about it. So I'm, I'm rigged up now. I'll, um, I'll give you a bird's eye view of what you're looking at when you're tying knots and leader. So leader oh, as well, I'll touch on leader for a second. Okay, if you're fishing your light setups, well, you, can, you can match your braid, 10 to 12 pound leaders. Um, I've, I've seen plenty of fish caught on light, uh, plenty of mangrove jacks caught on light leaders. But when you're fishing in more tricky areas, tend to um, just step it up a bit. And if you want to use top water, might be also a good idea to run a bit of standard line. Don't run your um, fluorocarbon, just run a normal mono because it won't drag the lure down in the water. And yeah, you can get away with a little bit heavier leader if you're fishing tight into them nasty areas. All right, so let's have a look at probably one of the most talked about and used knots. Um, I use FG on, on all, my, all my lines from very light lines up into the heaviest stuff. So I'll quickly show you how to tie one of those. And yeah, I'll get out on the water. Hopefully we, or hopefully myself and whoever comes with me, we can pull a jack and I'll try and get it on the GoPro and just show you how useful they are. So yeah, that's my setups. Um, I'm really loving the Akuma gear. It's, it's good quality and it's affordable and it, and it suits my fishing. I can go out. You know, I've got a little tinny now, so I can, I'm a little bit rough here and there, but I just put that gear to the side. It, it works great. Yeah, and it and catches fish. So yeah, let's show you that knot. Okay, so let's, let's show you that FG knot. So, okay, let's say you've been out for a session. What I normally do is change all my leaders. So we'll go from the beginning. So I'll, I'll put my, my line, uh, bait caster that I'm, I'm doing now on free spill and what I generally do if that's if it doesn't fall off the the bag is I'll take my leader pass leader off and I'll take a, a bit of length of line as well so I'll cut that off and we start fresh again okay so what you want to do is pull yourself enough line so you can make a loop Right, so I've got enough line there. Grab your leader. Now I tie my FG sitting down. So what I'll do, and I generally tie them at home before I go, I'll get my leader and I put it up under my leg. So it goes to about the centre of my body. So that'll give me plenty of room to be able to plait, as you'll see in a second. Okay, so now you've got your length of line. So we've got the end here. Take it about you know, a foot and a half, put a loop in it, like so. Make sure you've got plenty of line still. And with that loop, just wrap it around your two fingers at the end here. But you want to leave yourself enough loop above there to be able to make, and you'll get used to it, a triangle up there between your two fingers. Okay, so that's essentially a nice tight line there, and it's a nice triangle. And you can put this finger in there to grab your leader as you braid or plait or whatever you want to call it. So, look, I'm no expert at this knot. This is how I seen it on the net and this is how I tied it and I have done for quite a long, a long time. And it always works. So now my leader is nice and tight under my leg. And as you can see, hopefully you can see that it goes a bit past where my triangle is. Obviously you can move your hand center of the body. So from now on, I put this finger in the inside there, so he can grip in the crease. I bring it under and under again on the opposite side, keeping it nice and tight. And because that leader is underneath my leg, I can keep that tight the whole time. And I just keep braiding it opposite sides of that triangle, keeping that plait nice and tight. And you can also pull it forward as well just keep going under. Now if you've got a little bit of OCD, 
like myself, if I've got 20 pound braid, I'll do 20 turns. Or, yeah, you probably don't need to go that many, but 20 is a good number. Just keep wrapping it through. Okay, so once you've got the amount you want there, you'll see a nice braided line uh, knot. So what do I do? I'll grab my index finger and thumb and I'll pinch that in there nice and tight. Okay, so now I can release my looped up line. So now you're going to be left with a little tag end and also, which I always end up with heaps, uh, that's your loose end line there of your braid. So what I generally do, I'll cut that loose end line, not the one attached to your bait caster or spin reel. So then I've got enough line so I can do some half hitches. So just bear with me for a second. I'll cut that. And there you go. So what you want to do, and also I keep it neat, keep your tag end and your um, braid that runs down to your reel nice and close to itself, but you always keep that pinched. And to, to stop having to pinch there, all you do is put a half hitch in. So basically the rest of the knot is just running half hitches. So I've done one half hitch, I brought that really nice and tied up to that, up to where the knot is and I've half hitched my tag end and the braid that runs to your reel. So what you do then, you run opposite half hitches, keeping that line tight and because that line is under that leg, the leader sorry, it's always staying tight. Pull them half hitches down nice and tight. There you go, that one does as well. So like, like I said, this is just the way I've learnt. Um, off the internet, there's so many videos on how to tie an FGs and different variants, but this is, this is what suits me. So I'll do five or six half hitches up and down. So, and then I pull it tight both sides. And once you get the hang of it, it's not really, it's not a long knot to tie, it's very quick. Okay, so you have your tag end left over. Say I've done five or six half hitches over both the line that runs to your reel and the tag end. Then I'll just cut that off and you can get very close to your knot. Now if you had a lighter in the time you might want to stub that tag end a little bit but I don't really have lighters hanging around all the time so what I'll do then I'll just finish the knot off with five or six half hitches. I'll turn it half hitches and just keep everything tight. The whole time that leader has been tight under my leg and it just gives you a really nice result because you want, it's like a, the um, well, best I can explain it is like a finger trap. Okay, so I'll do one more half hitch over. And you're just half hitching over your line, that's your braid. So there you go. That's come in nice. Again, I'll cut the tag end off. Nice and close. There you go. And voila, see I've got a little bit of a tag end there, you can burn that down. Um, I'll have to grab my braid scissors and just neaten that up a tiny little bit. And that is a really good knot that will pass through all your guides, especially if you've got smaller guides. And yeah, very neat, very clean and very strong. So, and there you go. All set, all set to go jack fishing. Let's get into it.